Good morning. We find ourselves at Wednesday of the 31st week in Ordinary Time, and today actually is the Feast of All Souls, November 2nd, and perhaps there is no better way to conclude uh, our review of the Holy Rosary and its mysteries by today uh, just reviewing briefly the five glorious mysteries of the Rosary, and of course those we are most familiar with. And the first, of course, is uh, the resurrection of our Lord from the dead. And this, of course, is the greatest single feast day in the life of the church. And, uh, of course, we have a special feast solemnity for this, and that's Easter Sunday. And uh, it's interesting uh, that from the early days of the church, uh, it was always Sunday that the Christians gathered uh, to commemorate the death and burial and the resurrection of the Lord. But it was on Sunday because that is the day of the Lord's resurrection. And quickly, uh, the fathers of the church uh, it began to refer to, and it was St. Augustine who said it probably better than any of the others, but so many referred to the beauty of every Sunday, but St. Augustine called every Sunday a little Easter, which of course, when you think about it, it really is. And uh, all four of the Gospels uh, give us an account of that resurrection of Jesus from the dead on that first Easter Sunday. And so uh, this perhaps the mystery of the rosary of any of them needs no further explanation because it really is the center of our liturgical life. Now the second glorious mystery is the ascension of the Lord into heaven. And that occurred 40 days after Easter, after Jesus arose from the dead and spent those 40 days uh, appearing to his apostles, our Blessed Mother, and those other first disciples, helping them to fully understand uh, the, the whole meaning of his earthly life, his passion, his death, and his resurrection. And uh, the ascension of the Lord, uh, as the Church teaches us, and you find this mentioned uh, in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, completes the Paschal Mystery with Jesus ascending to the Father uh, in heaven and sitting at his right hand, the gates of heaven are reopened to all of us, and uh, Jesus has perfectly fulfilled the will of the Father in becoming incarnate as a man among us and suffering, dying, and rising from the dead as our Lord and Savior for us. And so, with the ascension of the Lord on Ascension Thursday, uh, what the church looks at uh, in particular and helps us try to understand better is that theological virtue of hope. If there is any feast in our church's life that gives us uh, tremendous hope and helps us understand what true hope is, it's the ascension of the Lord because where the Lord has gone, the church in her prayers on that day says, we hope to follow. And that's true hope. That Jesus, who has redeemed us uh, and reopened the gates of heaven for us by his return to the Father on the feast of the ascension, this is what we hope to have and therefore this is what should be motivating us from day to day in living our Catholic faith. That in doing so in keeping it strong and strengthening, strengthening it further, uh, we do all this with the fervent hope that at the moment of death, when he will give us that just and eternal judgment, we will have heaven. And so uh, with the ascension of the Lord, uh, 40 days after Easter, we come to the third glorious mystery, which is the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles. That commemorates uh, the great feast of Pentecost, which occurred 
uh, 50 days after our Lord rose from the dead. And so uh, within uh, a brief period of time after the ascension, we come to that what the third glorious mystery reminds us of, that descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and our Blessed Mother gathered with them uh, and they are literally confirmed in their faith in Jesus, crucified and risen from the dead as our Savior. And of course, St. Luke, who is the author of the Acts of the Apostles, writes uh, very beautifully and in some detail about that first Pentecost Sunday where Peter, James, and John, and the others go out and begin to announce the good news which Jesus told them they were to do right before he ascended uh, back to the Father into heaven. And so uh, these first three mysteries have definite feast days in the liturgical year and the life of the church. Now the fourth glorious mystery, the assumption of our Blessed Mother into heaven, of course we commemorate that with the Holy Day of Obligation on August 15th. What this commemorates is that when our Blessed Mother came to that moment of death, when the soul leaves the body, because of who she is as the Mother of God, the Lord would not allow her body to lie in a grave and, and so to speak, corrupt over time. And so her body was assumed into heaven. And it is there that the Lord... Uh, uh, rejoins her soul with her body and our Blessed Mother lives with Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as the most perfect adorer of the Blessed Trinity for all eternity. And again in that feast day, uh, the solemnity of the assumption of our Blessed Mother into heaven, the church again prays that where uh, uh, our Blessed Mother has gone, we hope to follow. And then finally, uh, the church celebrates the fifth uh, glorious mystery of the rosary, uh, with the, uh, which is the coronation of our Blessed Mother as Queen of Heaven and Earth. Uh, the church celebrates that feast uh, eight days after the uh, solemnity of the Assumption on the Feast of the Queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary. What the Church has done has created for us a, a mini octave, if you will, between the Assumption of our Blessed Mother into Heaven and as we celebrate her Queenship as Queen of Heaven and Earth eight days later on August 23rd. And so uh, as we conclude uh, our discussion and review of the Most Holy Rosary uh, just as the month of the Holy Rosary has come to an end. I encourage you uh, to make a, a habit, a good habit, of praying uh, the Rosary every day. It does not take that long. Uh, whether it be the joyful, the sorrowful, the luminous, or the glorious mysteries, uh, pray that uh, rosary daily, pray those mysteries with uh, uh, great faith and fervor and soon you will see it becomes very much a part of your daily life and something that you just don't want to miss doing in the course of your day. May this month of November, which is a month dedicated to all the saints and the communion of saints, be a month of abundant graces for all of you.